Hey, hi friends, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to discuss about SwiftLint. Now, what is SwiftLint? So basically, it's a tool that allows you to follow or, or I can say enforce some of the Swift style and conventions into your code. Now, when you work on a project, so let's say that when you're working as a team with multiple um, no, members, it is very important to keep your code base consistent and clean. Right. Let's say that uh, you're writing uh, a variable name and you, you wrote something like let x equals to 5. Now when you are writing that time you might uh, know, know that x denotes what things whether it denotes uh, a name or it denotes a number or it denotes a particular value. After one month you will also not remember but let's imagine about someone else. He will not have any idea about that. Now like that there are other principles like let's say that how much function length, how much let's that you are writing big, big classes. It becomes very difficult to maintain such code base into long run. Okay. Now to reduce that thing or to make that thing beautiful, this Swift Lint helps us in multiple ways. Okay. So now Swift Lint has defined so many rules for us. Let's say that if you come to this GitHub here, there are so many rules that has been defined like what should be the uh, function minimum uh, length, what should be the total length of the class, uh, whether we should use first force and wrapping or not, or uh, how we should write a variable name, like that what should be the proper spacing between a function and the class. So like that, there are so many rules which are defined here. Now when we use it, it's not mandatory that you have to use all the rules. Now how can we use this Swift Lint? So if you come to the documentation part, uh, there are multiple ways to install it. Like we can use Homebrew or we can use Cocoa Pod. Now I prefer uh, Homebrew because when you use Cocoa Pods, then you have to add the Swift Lint as a dependency in your pod file. Okay, so if you are using Homebrew, then you don't even need to create a Cocoa Pod into your project. Okay, now let's open my terminal and what you have to do, you have to jump into your project directory and then you have to run this brew install shift line. Now I already have installed it so it will not install again. It will just tell me that the shift line is already installed. If it is not installed, then you can install it. Now if you have not installed, uh, if let's that for some other people it might give brew as error, then you have to go to homebrew and first install homebrew for you and then you can run this command. Okay, so see it's saying that it's already installed. Now the next step what we have to do is come down here and we need to copy this script. Okay. And uh, this script has to be added into your project. Now, which place? So you have to come here and then go to your build phases. And then here you can add this run script phase. Okay. So let me just paste it here. Now, this is a generic name, so you can even edit it. Okay. Now, if you further dig down into it, it also uh, written here that you might want to move your Swift Lint phase directly before the compile sources steps to detect error quickly before compiling. So basically, uh, it is a sequence how the scripts are run, like first target dependency, then this one, then this one. So let me just increase the order. Okay. So now I have moved the Swift Lint here. And now what I have to do, I have to simply stop the app which is running and I have to run this again. So right now you can see that there's no uh, warnings or error here. Now once I run it, the Swift Lint is see identifying the warnings and you can see that there are 14 warnings in my project. Okay. Now many of the warnings are related to the line length. So what the Swift Lint is basically telling you that uh, your line length should be within the 120 character. Okay. Uh, then there are other like uh, I am violating some comma rules and then if you see further here I am violating trailing white space like when you create a new class so if you see by default here I have some spaces so this is basically the trailing white space so you can just delete this white space and if you run it again then this trailing white space error will go away so not error basically the warning so all this basically makes your code more cleaner Okay, now from where these are coming, so if you see uh, further down the documentation here. So here, over 200 rules are included in SwiftLint, so there are around 200. And you can also create your own, like if you come down further uh, documentation here, where is that? See, you can even define your custom rules, let's say that 
for your specific requirement or you want a specific kind of rules which are not there in the swift plane you can even make your own custom rules like in this case it is giving you the error that i'm creating this variable but i'm never using it so this is all coming as a warning now there are also some of the uh, warnings that will come as an error for example in the same let me just delete this uh, variable name and let me just keep it just x now when i build it so it is giving me error it is not building the build is failing because the it is failing for the identifier name that when you declare a variable it should have minimum three right and if you remember we were talking about naming something with x so you cannot do that uh, with the swift lint because um, the swift lint will not allow you it. so you have to write some meaningful name okay uh, now let me change to some proper name here let's say that uh, i'll call it as number but if you see here um, i'm using some sort of force unwrapping right and force unwrapping is one of the thing that we want in Swift to avoid because uh, if the value is not there, the application might crash. Okay, there are some scenarios where the Swift, uh, where the force unwrapping will work, but let's say that in general, I want to not to use force unwrapping anywhere. <laughs> and if in some case, if I want to use it, the Swift plane also gives you an option to disable some of the uh, errors or some of the warnings okay that in a particular function or in a particular file you don't want a particular rules to just follow so swift lint will not run that particular rule in that particular function now if you uh, search here let me search for some wrapping so you can see force unwrapping here okay now one more thing you have to uh, notice here that there are many rules like Swift Lint has 200 rules, but all the rules are not enabled. There are some rules which are disabled by Swift Lint. Now, force unwrapping is one of such rules which Swift Lint has disabled. Now, how can we enable this rule? So, if you want to enable the rules which are disabled by Swift Lint, you have to define those rules inside this opt in rule section. Now, where should I write this? Like, till now, no, we have not created any file, right? Now, for that, if you further see here we have something called this swift lint yml so we have to create a file with this name and then all the rules that we are going to define has to be defined inside this okay so let me go to terminal again and let me create a file so touch and then this name so this is going to create a file for me okay now let me open this folder and if you see here this file is basically created uh, for me okay now I will just open it and I'll try to write some of the rules that I want so let me go further here and how can we disable or enable something so you can see that they have given if you want to disable something you can write disable rules and then the name of the, those rules similarly for this uh, force unwrapping I have to write something where I have to write something in the opt-in section right so let me just copy this and uh, paste it here okay and instead of this empty count I'm going to write do that force unwrapping so force and then unwrapping okay and we can also see that uh, we have some sort of severity like whether that, that will come as a warning or that will come as error like you can see that force cast is a warning force try is a warning and uh, something will be as an error also like for example you can see this file length if it crosses 500 it will come as a warning but if your file length crosses to 100, 100 then it will give you as an error okay now let's say that i want this uh, force unwrapping as a uh, error so let me copy this one and uh, let me call this as force unwrapping instead of warning i'll call it error okay now i saved it and let me run it again and see whether this line is giving you error or not now this is not giving me any error but see i am getting some error while parsing now basically where it is happening it is happening in this particular uh, file when the we are building it the compiler is trying to see the rules and there it is finding some of the error so 
what I generally prefer that see when you write these rules there are a way of writing like uh, what should be the spacing what should be the uh, spacing between do, these two rules how much space we have to leave before starting uh, any rule all these are fixed and if you try to just you know like uh, change that thing it will start giving you error so one of the best options you can use it you can use some of the other editor where you can see actually proper linings like uh, i prefer using uh, visual studio code so instead of opening through here let me open the same file through visual studio code so now you can see here this is showing something like this like and uh, if you see here let me just copy and paste uh, this whole thing and let's see that how actually this one is looking so if you see here that all are starting with the first line so that means there is no spacing and uh, if we have any rules that also is starting from the very first so here if you see this one i have to actually start from the this i'm was giving some extra space here and uh, for this uh, opt in rules if i see opt in rules and then a space empty count so this one is looking good okay so let me just uh, now remove this things i don't need all this things here so just uh, i was trying to show that when you are writing this rule make sure that you are not leaving any spacing so that it works perfectly okay now i saved it again and now let me run my app one more time so this time if you see that um, this parsing actually works perfectly and it is start it is started giving me error that should be avoided force unwrapping and it is coming as error because i define this as a error now instead of error what i can do i can change it to warning let's say that it should come just as a warning not as a error so change it to warning save it again and now you build it one more time and now you can see that the same thing got changed to a warning and your code is actually building okay so that way you can define as many as rules and you can customize and it helps you in a proper way to maintain your code and throughout this uh, series we will try to follow more and more coding principles and that's one of the reason that i thought of using this swift lint in very early stage of my application development okay so that's all about uh, today's video hope uh, you have learned how to to use swift lint and how you can customize based on what you require from it thanks for watching if you have not subscribed to the channel then please do subscribe thank you